go, my friends, and welcome back to Silly Scale Models. So, in this uh, series, we are looking at Airfix's 148 uh, Mark 14 Spitfire, and we're actually going to be doing two. Uh, I had one in stock that I was going to make, uh, and I also was asked um, to do a commission uh, one as well, so I thought I'll do them both at the same time and, you know, save myself a little bit of time there. That didn't happen in the slightest uh, building these. Um, I had hoped uh, with this to be, you know, relatively straightforward, nice and simple, just put them together, paint them, jobs are good. And particularly after doing their dogfight doubles, I did a couple of months ago, um, late last year, middle last year, I think it was. Um, these were really nice, they were good, they were great, they went together really nicely. Can't remember any major um, issues. Um, so after that, I did um, their Wellington, which is one kit in particular I was looking forward to doing because it was the one I first built. Um, I'll link both of these uh, videos in uh, the description if you'd like to see those. Um, I'm distinctively remembering the first episode of the Wellington build saying that, you know, these have put a little bit of faith back into Airfix. You know, these have put a little bit of faith back into Airfix. Building these two, that was very, very short-lived. Um, I mean, yeah, they are nicely detailed. The detail in Torn is so much better uh, than they used to be. But fitting, uh, some of the fitting, it's still a little bit squiff, uh, unfortunately. Um, so, and one of the biggest issues I had, uh, and this is not good uh, for me in the slightest, and particularly trying to do the channel, is I actually lost a large uh, chunk of footage um, doing this. So it was like, you know, just bad luck through, and through uh, building these. So yeah, so we're going to be looking at the RAF version, uh, which will do my usual weathering and, and painting, which we'll look at in the next um, episode. This one, at the very end, I will show you uh, G Spit. And this was quite, it was really hard for me to do because it had to be clean. Oh, I hate it. Don't even, I hate doing clean models. Uh, but because this one's silver uh, and it was, you know, it was very nicely done up and, and all that. Um, so this one has to be clean. Don't like it. Anyway, uh, we'll get into it. Uh, so grab yourself uh, a copper and a bicky, and I'll see you on the other side. So for the most part of um, the Spitfires, um, the detailing is is quite nice. It's quite crisp. Um, the cockpit is a very nice, um, but still simple, um, detailed uh, layout. It's um, it's kind of like a little segment on its own it's like a little little bucket piece uh, the only annoying kind of annoying bit with it was that there's no sort of uh, proper locator pins uh, for the two halves so you've got to try and stick them right in the, in the first place but you yeah, have got that center console uh, there that does help you um, in part uh, put the two halves together Now, what I did quite like about this is that uh, the two ribs uh, towards the back of the cockpit, particularly the part that holds the seat, slot in separately. Um, so for me and the way I paint, um, that's better because it means I can take those parts out, spray them separately um, and get, you know, a good coverage without, um, you know, missing anything. To be fair, from the back of this seat, I mean, that last rib there, you won't see it anyway, so it doesn't actually really matter. Um, but you know, at the time I wasn't, I, I hadn't realised that that part wasn't going to be seen. So you're only really going to see the top of the back of uh, the headrest there. Now, because I'm doing two versions of this, um, the one that I'm doing has uh, the photo recon uh, camera in the back, which is a nice little. Um, little piece on its own 
um, with a nice clear part for the lens there. So you have to do is just paint around that lens covering. Also with this one, um, I also added um, the seat belts for it because of course there's no going to be pilot in this. So you know you, you'll be able to see that quite clearly. So I thought I'd do the seat belts for that. These are um, Eddard's um, seat belts, RF seat belts, um, which I had a, a spare set. Um, lying around the other one uh, G spit um, the customers actually asked to have um, the pilot inside so I didn't bother obviously with the seat belt because it would be quite pointless um, I did have to butcher him a little bit to get him to fit in I actually had to cut his uh, feet off at the ankle so he'd actually fit in uh, to the cockpit so as you can see him there he's all done um, the pilot I was told in this case actually had uh, a white helmet so his helmet was painted white now here comes the start of the problems this cowl here doesn't really fit very well now it fits kind of fits over as it should do but there's quite a large uh, gap so I butted it up towards the cockpit because of the, the window um, so I thought that's the best place to, to, to stick it to and you can just see there at the front uh, the large gap um, which I ended up um, happened to fill a little bit later on. So you can see that gap there a little bit clearer and you can also see where I've had to uh, fill in a substantial uh, amount around uh, the front area, uh, particularly down the nose. We had several attempts um, at having to, to fill, sand and fill this. Um, after priming, a lot of these problems become more um, predominant, uh, particularly between the top um, segments of the wing that meets the fuselage. You can see there, there's, there was a very large gap which I have filled, but as you can see, I've got to go over and do it again. You can see all those little pencil markings there as well, there as well, where all the areas that I need to sand back, refill um, with um, putty, and then um, just repeat the process all over again. Even on the bonnet or the top of the cowl in there, you can still see um, there's quite a large uh, dip in there. Um, so all those had to be, again, sanded back and, and filled in. I actually thought this was going to be quite fairly simple and straightforward. As you can see, it wasn't. So there we go, my friends. Um, that's the end of this episode. Um, I will show you G-Spit uh, in a moment. Um, and then all I can do with this one is I do apologise on how short this is. Um, the whole thing has just been a pain in the backside almost from start to finish. Um, so again, I do I do apologise for that. Um, it's unfortunately it's one of those things. Um, but I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're new around here uh, and you do like what you see, please uh, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Also, if you put bell notifications on, I'll tell you when the next uh, next video is up. Um, but apart from that, that's it from me. Um, yeah, here's G-Spit and I'll see you again soon.